Hello fellow wanderers, I'm Endry, and thank you for joining me as we wander through a little bit of RimWorld Alpha 15. In particular, this will be a modless run, and I'm going to run it as kind of a new player tutorial as well, so expect a lot of explanations as we go along. So if you're looking for a little more fast-paced or high-level play, uh, you might want to try a different Let's Play out there because this is going to be pretty basic, uh, pretty low-level play here. That being said, Let's get right into it. So we're at the main page here, this is by Ludeon Studios. And on the right hand side here, we've got a bunch of web links. So you can click those, they do exactly what they say. And over here, we've got our options. Tutorial, I'm not gonna be running this because I'm gonna be going over a lot of what it does at the same time. And I tend to do things in a little bit different order than the tutorial recommends. New colony, this is to start a new colony. Options, opens up your options screens. Um, not a whole lot you can do here as far as graphics and all that sort of thing, but you can uh, do your key bindings and all of that. Temperature mode, I prefer Fahrenheit. I'm an American. Celsius, while I do know where freezing is, eh, I'll pass. <laughs> uh, mods, uh, there's a lot of mods for this game through the Steam Workshop or even through Ludion's website. Uh, I won't be running any for this particular playthrough, though I might start a playthrough in the future that I will run mods on. Credits, this it's exactly what it says, and quit to OS. So let's jump in here and make a new colony. So first thing you have to do is you have to pick a scenario. And Crash Landed is the scenario that came with the game originally. It's three colonists, a pet, uh, a decent tech level, and you just try to survive. Rich Explorer is a single person with a bunch of really good gear. Uh, I don't find it to be as challenging really as Crash Landed because you get new colonists fairly quickly until you reach a certain level determined by the AI you're using for your um, scenario runner. And Lost Tribe, uh, significantly lower tech level, five tribe members, you don't have any good guns or anything like that. Uh, it's definitely hard. Um, they've made a few changes lately that make it a little easier to survive through things like heat waves and cold winters but it's definitely considerably harder than Crash Landed. And then you can make your own custom scenarios. I'm not gonna be getting into that here. And of course you have a link to the Steam Workshop where you can download some scenarios as well. Uh, for the purposes of this run, I'm just gonna be doing the Crash Landed uh, basic run. And uh, let's continue on. All right, these are our storytellers. Cassandra Classic, she's pretty rough. Definitely a survival run. Uh, rough is the default setting. Um, I play on rough generally when I play through by myself because I want to do a little bit more tutorializing in this one. I'm probably not going to be doing Cassandra rough, though intense and extreme, the mood penalties and all sorts of things are really bad and we'll get into that kind of later, but I don't think it's going to fit for this particular playthrough. Uh, Phoebe Chillax. Uh, it's the same difficulty of the encounters as Cassandra Classic there. There's just a lot more space between the encounters, and that's probably what I'm doing for this one. I will stick to rough because I do like the difficulty of the encounters, and the extra time between them will make it a little bit more manageable as far as explaining things, showing off building the base, and that sort of thing. And then Randy Random is exactly what it says on the tin. Random. This stuff determines basically how hard your encounters are, and then this guy determines he'll throw whatever he wants at you whenever he wants to. Uh, you'll know after playing through a few games that usually your first few encounters are pretty similar uh, on Cassandra Classic and Phoebe Chillax, and uh, Randy Random just throws it all out the window. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, Rough here on Phoebe Chillax and click Next. Seeds! These are randomly generated seeds. You can share them if you want people to share your planet. To be honest, I don't know exactly what they do, but let's just seed this with Endry. Size, that's the size of the world map. Yet again, it's not all that important, but let's go ahead and hit generate. And this is apparently the world that that particular name generates. So you got all sorts of different kind of terrain up here. Ice sheets, if you really want to give yourself a challenge, you can't grow food here at all. Uh, it's really cold and it's really rough. So, uh, play at your own risk. Uh, tundra, a uh, little bit better. You can't grow food, but it's not as cold. Still don't recommend it, especially for beginning players. Uh, Breal Forest, uh, it has a fairly short growth period. 
1st of summer to 11th of summer, really short growth period. Um, it's not nearly as cold. There are some advantages to playing in boreal forests. You don't get as many diseases and things like that. Uh, and as you get lower down towards the equator, it's going to be a little bit more reasonable in those boreal forests. You've got deserts. And somewhere in here, I think you can probably find a harsh desert, but I'm not going to search for it too hard here. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you've got a pretty decent growth period. Uh, it's pretty flat, and there's not a lot of trees, so making things out of wood can be rather difficult. Uh, temperate Forest is probably what I would recommend a new player uh, go with. It's a uh, decent-sized growing season, not year-round. Uh, uh, diseases are pretty medium level in their uh, particular outbreak, but it's not particularly hard and not particularly easy. Tropical Rainforest, year-round growing cycle, and tons of diseases. Uh, while it seems good that you have year-round food, there's a way to get around food growth problems, and so I don't really recommend jungles to start out with. And then you have Arid Shrubland. It's one step below temperate forest and one step above desert. Um, Year-round growth, it does have a little bit more wood in it, um, but I still don't generally recommend it. So let's take a look around and see what we can find. Normally, I like to play inside of mountains because I like to burrow into rocks and that sort of thing, though I tend to find it a little bit uh, cheap if you go under a mountain and hide. It trivializes a few of the encounters in the game. So this time I'm going to be looking for more for like hills, that sort of thing. And looking at our growth period. 6 to spring to 6 to fall. And if we go down this way, we're looking at 1st of spring to 11th of fall. Uh, 11th of spring, 1st of fall. That's not bad. So let's see here. Let's look at... Oh. Let's see, we've got temperate forest. That's mountainous. Temperate forest, large hills. We've got slate, limestone, and granite. I would like to see if I can find marble. Marble, slate, and limestone with large hills in a temperate forest. Sure, that'll work for now. So let's select this and move on to our colonists. All right, your first three colonists are the most important characters you're going to make because they're the only ones you have any real control over. So... Personally, I have a few things that I do with colonists that I have to do for my first three that I'm really picky about. So pardon me as we randomize through a few things. Uh, in particular, I want them to be capable of doing everything, and I don't want them to have any injuries. And there's a few traits down here that are pretty bad. Uh, I'm not going to try and go for a perfect set of settlers here, uh, but I'm going to try and get at least something that's not crippled. So let's see here. What do we have here? Greedy needs an impressive bedroom. That's not too bad. Teetotaler won't use drugs and alcohol. It can be bad. It can be good. But at the moment, it's not a particularly big problem. And trigger happy means probably not going to hand this person a gun. I wouldn't hand them a gun anyway. They're horrible with them. So let's go down some stats real quick. Shooting, how well you shoot guns. Melee, how well you fight in melee. So... High passion here means they're going to learn 150% uh, as much per use as a normal person would. So I'll probably end up giving them the knife. Social is six. That's not bad. That's talking to people and recruiting prisoners. Animals is handling animals. Medicine is doctoring. Cooking is making food. Passion, but low skill. Eh. Construction is building stuff. Growing is growing stuff. Mining is mining stuff. I know, really hard to figure that out, right? Artistic is to make sculptures, crafting is to make gear, and research is researching. So this person's probably going to end up being a more in-base person, crafting, research. I'll probably have them help with cooking to start. Uh, but other than that, they're not particularly going to be useful early game, but they can haul. So, hey, they can haul. All right, let's see here. <laughs> oh, oh, if only they weren't incapable of so much stuff. I do like Psychopath. There's reasons for it. Uh, fast walker is good. Iron Willed is amazing. But they can't haul. They can't clean. They can't craft. They can't cook. They can't do anything intellectual. I'm going to pass. Now let's see here. Uh, incapable of violent. No, I'm all right with that. Um, 
As you can see, it, it likes to put no dumb labor a lot, which is really annoying. Oop, nope, bad back, not gonna happen. Uh, also, older colonists tend to be worse than not. Oh, here we go. This person's actually related to this person here, which means they get a permanent mood boost uh, as long as that person is alive. If that person dies, yeah. Nervous, pessimist, nope, we're done. Those, I could take one of those, two of those together means that they're going to go crazy all the time. And we'll kind of get into that later. Uh, hearing loss, what does that do? Um, hmm. I mean, they're not bad otherwise, but 65, nah, too old. Let's take a look. Normally they're, they're nicer than this to me about actually getting stuff. Industrious, work speed, work speed, fast walker. They're neurotic, which means they'll break a lot easier, but you know what? I will take that if they're a fast walker and industrious and they're a constructor. They're good with animals. Mm, we still don't have a doctor or a grower, but he can, you know, this person can cook, which will be decent. Uh, they can help grow. They're not great at it. They have no artistic or research skill, but I don't really care. Let's move on to the last person. Incapable of violent. Nope. We definitely need at least one person who can shoot stuff. So not you. Nope, I probably just skipped past someone. Looking too quickly. Uh, oh, there we go. This person can shoot. No injuries. Teetotaler, careful shooter, and volatile. Oh, boy. Nope. Nope. Volatile is, is way, way too bad. Oh, they can shoot. Um, Psychically hypersensitive is actually really bad, but we're not going to worry about it. Neurotic means they work faster, but they break faster. So this person's probably going to go crazy more than anyone else. But I don't really want to roll through this anymore, so we're going to li live with it. Good shooter, decent melee, social, animals. Good medicine, so they'll be our doctor. We don't really have anyone who's particularly good at growing, which is disappointing. We have someone with a passion for growing, so you know these two will get their skill up quickly. There will be certain crops we won't be able to grow, but... With that being said, let's kind of jump into the actual game. All right, generating map. Of course, it's going to take a while. A bit longer than normal, actually. The three of you awaken your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to escape pause before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So we're going to click OK. And we're going to see our crash pods drop down. The first thing we're going to do when everyone pops out is we're going to hit space bar. That's going to pause our game. And now we're going to start looking around the map. What do we have? What do we have indeed? Do we have any extra food that's fallen? Anything like that? In here, nothing there. Boomalopes. Don't really like to see boomalopes, but eh, we'll live. Let's see here. Normally, there's a little bit of extra survival food around the edges here. I might just be being blind and missing it. There's actually a mod that will let you uh, unforbid all of this stuff really quickly, and we'll kind of get into unforbidding in a second here. But I'm not seeing anything right away, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Let's look at our colonists here. First things first, you're going to have a bunch of resources around here. Wood, steel, you've got your weapons, your medicine, your components, your silver, all sorts of stuff here. And it all starts forbidden. And the first thing we really want to do is unforbid this stuff. So let's go to the food here. Let's unforbid that. Let's unforbid that food. Unforbid our components. I'm going to unforbid our silver. Did they really not give us a lot of wood? Oh, there it is. Unforbid that. Unforbid all of our steel. Unforbid our medication. And let's see here. Who was my... Oh, nope, not the dog. There we go. Who is my good gun person? A one, a one, and an eight. Eight. You get the survival rifle. You have a passion for shooting, but you're horrible at it. So let's give you the pistol. And you're really good with melee, so let's give you the knife, even though really we're not going to be using the knife for much. So real quick, let's unpause long enough for them to equip their stuff. All right. Now then, 
we have a husky. That's probably the best animal you can possibly get. So we're going to have, we're going to go to the husky, click the husky, go to training here, open it up, click obedience, click haul, or just click haul and it will automatically do obedience. This will use up some food every time they train them, but it's really nice to actually have a husky or any animal hauling. That way you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. It frees up a person from hauling duties and hauling takes up a lot of time. All right, let's take a look around and see what we've got around us. We've got some ship parts here. I'm not too worried about those yet. Uh, let's see, do we have any geothermal vents around? Do we, do we, do we? Hmm, one up here. Let's see, one over here by that. That might be bad, completely sealed. It might be a really bad place to break into. Uh, oftentimes there's traps in those. Geothermal vent down here. Hmm, geothermal vent over here. Not any in a really good defensible location. Which is kind of a pity. Tell you what though, let's start out. Hmm, I can make walls across here, walls across here. There's a geothermal up here, which isn't too bad. So why don't we go ahead and sure, we're going to kind of build our base up here. So let's go to architect. Let's go to zones and areas here. We're going to make a stockpile zone and let's go ahead. We'll just pick a random spot up here. Um, I think I'm going to end up digging into this first. Uh, any steel, any steel, steel down here. Steel over here. Any steel over here? Oh, gold, it looks like. Machinery. No, that's all right. We can do some exploratory mining. Let's go ahead and make a stockpile. I like these to be 11 by 11. And then you right click to unselect. But let's click that stockpile and let's see what it's actually storing. Allow rotten. Nope, we don't want rotten stuff there. Uh, we can go ahead and allow foods. Uh, we're not going to allow. Uh, Human-like corpses, colonist corpses, strangers' corpses. Nope, I would much prefer there are no human-like corpses here. And we're not going to worry about the and we're not going to worry about animal corpses quite yet. We're going to have to make a cold room for that. So, but everything else, go ahead and throw in there. Not really a big problem. And then while we're at it, let's go ahead and make a dumping stockpile. And since I'm probably going to wall off right here. For the moment, let's just make that dumping stockpile kind of like mm, that. And we can go ahead and make a dumping stockpile kind of like that. Why not? There we go. And that's just where you're going to put rocks and other useless things that you have no particular use for. And let's move on. All right. So. We've got our weapons equipped. We've got some stockpiles set up and the stockpiles are just going to haul stuff too. So why don't we go up here and we need to build a bedroom. Now we're going to build some temporary bedrooms here because in the long run, I prefer larger bedrooms. It's not strictly necessary, but it's just the sort of thing I like to do. So open up architect here. Let's go to structure and we're going to do walls and we're going to click on wood. You're not going to have a lot of stone anytime soon. So let's just make a very basic little bedroom. We don't really want them to share it. So let's see here. We've got two spaces for the bed, space for the back wall, and space for a door. Do we want one more space in here? Mm, yeah, let's do one more. But we're not going to make these particularly wide. Do I want it like that? One extra space just in case? Sure. All right. So let's go ahead, build these one, two, three, four. Let's do one more. All right. So these are going to be the basic outlines of our bedrooms. Go ahead and click door over here, go to wood and put a door, a door, a door, a door, a door. All right. Now then, uh, bedroom's not too useful without an actual bed. So for the moment, um, 
Yeah, sure. Let's let's have them actually make beds to start out with. Our guys aren't too good at construction, but that's all right. We can always replace these later, and these are just temporary bedrooms anyway. And while we're at it, uh, wood floors. Why not? Let's let's do this. That way, they will actually get some skill in construction. All right. Okay, so we've got a basic bedroom thing set up. We've got some stockpiles, dumping zones. Now we need to actually get some labor done. So let's go ahead, go ahead and escape. You can pop out and let's go to work. This is the way you control all of your little colonists here. And they are idiots. They will do exactly what this says, even if it gets them hurt. Uh, for your first time playing, you might want to stick with the automatic priorities here. I'm going to do manual because I have certain things I prefer. So let's click manual priorities here. And the first thing we're gonna do, everyone firefights all the time. Everyone firefights. Doctoring, well, you're our only good doctor. So you're gonna be our doctor. We're gonna put you at one because there's no reason not to. Doctoring doesn't happen very often. Click, we're gonna put it one. That's just toggling switches. Wardens, who do you wanna be our warden? You have a seven, you have a six. So sure, well, are you gonna do our growing or our cooking? Who's our cook? Oh, you're our cook. Okay, sure. Doctor, you can also be a warden. Animal handling, yep, you're good at that. And you are our cook. So we're gonna go ahead and give you both a one there. We're actually not gonna have them cook meals. We're gonna have them butcher meat. And hunting, oh dear. Well, let's see here. Who do we give that rifle to? Another C, all right. So our hunter is gonna be him, constructor, Yep, you are definitely our, hmm, see they're our cook, but they're also our constructor. So we're going to try and not overwhelm them with jobs. In fact, for the moment, we're not going to worry about it. We're not going to be cooking right away. I want everybody to do repairs. It's just an easy way to get construction skill up. So there's no reason not to do it. Growth, we've got a four and a two. So you can both be growing. Growing doesn't take a lot of time. I'm not going to have you mine. If it comes up, I'm going to have you and you mine. We're not going to be doing a lot of that quite yet. I do like plant cutting getting done. That's how you get your wood. And let's see here. Smithing, we're not worried about at the moment. Tailoring, we're not going to worry about at the moment. Art, we won't worry about. Crafts, we won't worry about. Because we don't have any of those tables yet, and we're not going to get them for a little while. And then hauling, if you get down this far, please haul, please clean. And then who's going to be my researcher? Seven, seven. Uh, we're going to have you do research. You've got a good passion for it. And then we're going to fill these out more as we get along. But for the moment, this should work out just fine. So let's go ahead, click spacebar to get them actually moving. And I'm going to go ahead and hit three, which is going to put them on high speed. So we can actually watch some stuff get done. So you can see here, they're going to start hauling things into the camp. They're going to start building with the logs that are already there. And let's see if they manage to get everything built before they run out of wood. Nope, oh, looks like we got one bed done. And they're bringing some food, some steel, some medical supplies and all that. So that's good. And Floyd over there is actually building some stuff. And going to go get supplies. There are some mods here that can make the hauling and building a little bit easier, and we might get into those, get into those another time. But like I said, I wanted this to be very vanilla, so you kind of have a tutorial as to what's going on. And yeah, this is kind of a lot of the game. It's just waiting for things to get done. So let's see here. What else are we going to need? Well, we've got this storage area here, and for the moment, that's going to work out okay. But we're going to definitely need to have food storage somewhere because food does decay, does rot in this game, and you can make freezer rooms to kind of prevent that. So why don't we go ahead, and I might actually split my base up a bit. I might put my living quarters here and put my workspaces here, or actually, uh, let's put the workspaces over here, shall we? So let's go to architect, we'll go to orders, we'll go to mine, and I'm going to want to make a storeroom in here uh, in particular, let's see, where's a bunch of nice flat area? Right here? Sure. Let's go here. So make sure we don't go too far out. Uh, let's just mine this down. And then once that's down, this will be our outer wall. So 
go one in, two in, and I'm gonna want a nice big area in here. I'm not gonna worry about getting the walls very uh, smoothed out or anything because this is just gonna be a storage area for food. All right. That being said, if this is gonna be our storage area for food, uh, we're going to want to have an airlock here, but we'll get into that in just a bit because we're still going to need to mine this out. So let's go ahead and let them work on that for a while. That'll give them something to do. Oh, building roofs, that's good. Uh, buildings do have to have roofs on them if you don't want things to degrade or want it to be an outdoor penalty for sleeping in the outdoors. I'm not a big concern at the moment, but it will be in the future. All right, so they've got that mined out. It gives me kind of a better idea what this is going to look like. And it looks like I kind of, well, let's go ahead. I want to get this really flat and level because I'm kind of OCD that way. Okay, not actually OCD, but uh, like a lot of people who play these sorts of games, I'm a little neurotic about uh, symmetry and things lining up. And in this case, we only want one exposed square here so that I can vent some heat out into this area. And they're working on that. They've got three beds done. Uh, looks like they may have run out of wood. So let's go ahead. And since I don't really want a lot of wood in this area to begin with, a lot of trees, We'll have them chop a bunch of wood because we're going to need a ton of it in the future. All right, let's see here. What do we need to do next? Uh, let's see. Well, we could worry about power, but I'm going to kind of let them get this part done first because the power without uh, any kind of uh, space to store food, eh, it doesn't serve a lot of purpose quite yet. So they're going to cut some trees down real quick because they prioritize that over the mining. It's fine. And uh, that'll let the constructor actually get some construction done. In the meanwhile, how do we want to do this? Well, let's see here. Three, four, five, six. So that's our center point. Let's see here. This is going to be an external wall. So that's a door. That's a space. We want a door right here. And then we're going to want a reasonably sized space. Uh, nine by... Five, sure. We're going to make that our kitchen area. In fact, let's look at nine by six. And then we definitely want to have this being a wall space. And then this over here. And I have a particular style I like to build inside mountains uh, because you can't run conduits through stone. I like to make sure that I have an extra space around everything's edges for walls because you can run conduits through walls that you make. This is where a lot of the wood in the early part of the game is going to be going. Oh, I've got a colonist idle. Who is idle? Lloyd. Lloyd, why are you idle? What do you, oh, you don't mind. Well, since you don't mind and you're not cooking and you're not handling it at the moment, well, let's go ahead and, oh, oh, actually, you just reminded me. <laughs> I almost forgot. We have to start growing things. So, growing zones. This is our food production. Oh, uh, what do we want to do? I like to do these in 4x4 four four plots at the moment. Uh, later on, we're going to be doing some greenhouses. I'll probably be redoing a lot of my growing a little bit later because of it. But as you see, a lot of the land up here doesn't really let you grow on it. All these little gray spots here, uh, it's not growable land. So keep that in mind. And we've only got three colonists, so we don't need to produce a lot of food right now, but we do want to start producing some. So let's see here. So you set your growing zones, and you go here, and potato plant. Okay, that's fine, potato. Uh, let's go here, and I would like to grow... Mm, let's get some variety. How about some rice? And let's see here. Uh, you can keep potatoes, and then I do want to start growing a little bit of cotton. I don't think any of our growers have enough skill for anything else. Oh, they can do smoke leaf. Ooh, smoke leaf. Do I really want to? No, let's do cotton. So we've got three food crops and a cotton plant. Can't do hill root yet, but we'll worry about hill root later. That's uh, how you make uh, medicine, homegrown medicine. Otherwise, getting medicine is actually fairly difficult in the game. 
Uh, you're getting high quality medicine is almost impossible. All right, so they're gonna start growing stuff that's gonna get their growing skill up. He's gonna keep cutting trees over here, and then they will eventually get into mining into this area here. In fact, since I know that I am going to have to put an exterior conduit here, one, two, three, four, five, six, click, click, click. We're actually gonna want a few of those. It has to do with the nature of uh, cooling a room that size. All right, everyone's going to sleep. And while I'm here, let's go ahead and go to the restrict tab. This determines what they're allowed to do and where they're allowed to go. In this case, I'm actually gonna take all of this blue, turn it gray. That way they don't have to sleep longer than they need to for their rest need. And eh, home area. Home area is where your characters will clean, where they will uh, fight fires and all that sort of thing. It auto populates and for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it alone. This isn't a big enough area for me to particularly worry about trimming off the dumping stockpiles or anything like that. All right, they're getting all the crops planted. We've got some critters around here that might start eating our crops. Hopefully they won't. Sometimes they do. Later on, I'll actually be putting that in behind some walls because I don't particularly care for having out in the open where the squirrels and the rabbits and everything will start munching on your crops. It's really annoying later on when you get to really long growth crops. All right, they're cutting trees, cutting trees, cutting trees. I might have told them to cut a few too many trees. But that's all right, we're gonna pretend I didn't. <laughs> and in fact, the, the wood is useful uh, pretty much forever. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of wooden walls because we don't have the ability to cut stone yet. Uh, once we get the ability to cut stone, it might not be so useful anymore, but we're not gonna worry too much about that. And there they go, they're all kind of just Hacking away there. Let's see, how are we doing? We have 17 food at the moment. That's fine. We should probably be able to get food production up and running uh, before that becomes a problem. I'm going to have to hunt some things. Is there anything good to hunt on this map? Uh, we've got some boar up there. They're not too bad. Uh, some alpacas. Oh, let's pause for a second. And we've got a visitor. Little pop downs here tell you when things happen. Arrows point to them. Let's go ahead, we've got a visitor here, a paramedic named Jack, has a few items to trade. So this person can trade with us. Uh, they'll come and they'll visit and we could actually kidnap them if we wanted to, to add to our colony. But I'm not going to do that because it makes the locals hate you more. And if the locals hate you more, they tend to attack you more. And we'd rather not have the local tribes that will trade with us attacking us anytime soon. Oh, we struck compacted machinery that'll be nice. I'll get us some free components. Tell you what, why not? Uh, let's see, who is our social person? Our social person is, there we go. Right click the person and click trade. Anyone with a little question mark there, they're able to be interacted with. Do you have anything I particularly care for? Uh, you have medicine. You want a lot of money for medicine. Well, it's a good price actually, but mm, nope. I'm good. I'm not going to trade anything with them this time. Our silver is kind of important right now. All right, and they're off to sleep. And let's see here. Anything else we need to do? Hmm. We're getting there. We're digging out for our food storage and our kitchen area. Over here, we're going to actually do some bedrooms, but I want to get this done first. Uh, storing food is of critical importance because, well, you starve to death, you starve to death. And I'd particularly rather not have that happen. And as far as I know, you can't dehydrate to death. There's no drinking necessary in the game. It's purely optional, and they really do like beer. Uh, let's see. We should give this community a name. What are we going to call it? Um, hmm. Let's call it, in uh, honor of my EQ Titan newbie tutorials, let's just call this Titan. We'll be on a moon in the solar system that supports life and has rain and terrestrial animals. You know what? Don't, don't think about it too hard. This is Titan. This is definitely Titan. All right. But I think with that being said, it's probably time to call it a part here. So until our paths cross again, have fun and be safe, everyone.